You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. Former New York City Mayor Mike Bloomberg last night uh, made the moves to announce that he is going to be filing for the Alabama primary. Uh, of course, Bloomberg uh, has been back and forth, worth $52 billion. Apparently, he thinks that uh, Vice President Joe Biden is fading, which is why he is jumping into the race. Uh, really doesn't make much sense as far as I'm concerned. Let's go to my panel. Amisha Cross, she is political commentator, Democratic strategist, Joseph Williams, senior editor, U.S. News and World Report. Also, Derek Holly, host of Reaching America On Demand podcast. Uh, Joseph, I want to start with you. I've long said that Michael Bloomberg is the Mario Cuomo of politics. Anybody out there who, who has any level of history remembers that Mario Cuomo toyed with the idea of higher office, running for president. Then, of course, uh, he toyed with President Bill Clinton when Bill Clinton was going to nominate him to the U.S. Supreme Court. There was an airplane sitting on the tarmac, decided late, no, he's not going to do it. That's Mike Bloomberg. He, he's going to do something, then he's not. Then it's like, well, will he get in? Will he not? This, to me, is too late in the game. The reality is to have him jump in right now, it's not going to make a damn difference. Look, Tom Steyer, a billionaire, got in. He's still polling at 1%. Joseph, what say you? Well, just what we need, another billionaire from New York running for... Pro I mean, it, the idea on his face is just kind of ridiculous to me because we're not in that position right now. We've already got a billionaire. People are not... They're not receptive to, to, to this sort of idea. Steyer's polling in the basement. Bloomberg, who is his constituency? Who is he looking to lure? Not to mention the fact that if he goes down to South Carolina, I guarantee you people are going to bring up stop and frisk. People are going to bring up some of the other initiatives that he had that were hostile towards blacks and browns in New York. He was the law and order guy. And I saw him at the convention in Philly in uh, 2016. He sounded like he needed to be in Cleveland at the RNC because he was, he was talking about all the things that the, Repub that the Democratic Party didn't need to do. And among those were kind of appeasing or, or going soft and, and nominating somebody like Hillary Clinton. He said the only reason why he was there was because he was her friend. And that's the reason why he was able to diss everybody else. I think it's a bad idea. Amisha Cross, this is very simple. And that is, Mike Bloomberg is a horrible choice to even be a Democratic nominee. The reality, will he appeal to independents? Will he appeal to moderates? Sure. But look at John Huntsman. John Huntsman could have been a great general election uh, candidate, but he couldn't get through the primary. There is no way in hell Mike Bloomberg <laughs> is going to be able to get through the Democratic primary. It, it's more than just the primaries because it's going to be extremely hard for him to break through um, the rules to actually get on the debate stage. At the end of the day, you have to have a certain level of approval among various um, um, among various polls, and it, right now he's not doing that well. And I think the part of that is because. The American public is used to him toying with, well, I'm going to get in and I'm not going to get in. He's done it about four times at this point and through various elections. And I think that people are kind of tired of that. Also, more and more voters are pushing against this whole, um, this idea of billionaires basically taking it all and ruling this country. And to have somebody else decide that this is what they're going to do, and to, um, and to your point earlier, I think that part of, the, part of the angst is also that he doesn't necessarily appear as a Democrat. And with a party that continues to grow more and more progressive, that moves away from the center to a certain extent, it's going to be a lot harder for someone who is like him, who I would probably argue is right of moderate at this point, to actually break through and have have policies that make sense to a party that is trying to be more inclusive, that is trying to um, push forward in a lot of the policy and economic issues that we've seen create real hurdles for people across this country. Derek Holly, let's be real clear. Uh, I, I, first of all, Donald Trump is not a billionaire. Let's just be real clear with that. He's not. Perfect. Here's what I appreciate, though, about Republican billionaire, oh, no. billionaires. What they focus on oh, is people. what they do. And that is, you take Sheldon Adelson. A Sheldon Allison every year goes, you know what? I'm going to spend 100 to $200 million every four years to elect a Republican. That's what Allison does. The Koch brothers, that's what they do. Tom Steyer is wasting million. Not great. He's a billionaire. He's wasting $100 million. He's going nowhere. Mike Bloomberg, wasting money. So the reality is this here. Those two 
could have a much larger impact on this race if Bloomberg says, I'm going to drop $100 million, uh, on PACs and uh, also to drive turnout in critical places. Steyer says, I'm going to drop $100 million. That's $200 million alone that's separate from what the candidate's going to raise. That's how he should be spending his money, not running for a president, which is a joke. I agree with you that uh, it's probably too late in the game for him to get into it right now. Uh, for all the reasons that everyone has talked about, but at the same time, um, the Democratic candidates right now, he feels like they're just not meeting the expectations of the voters or the Democratic Party. So, I, again, I don't think it's the right time for him right now, but uh, someone needs to step up from the Democratic Party to take the lead, and right now it doesn't appear that Joe Biden's going to be it, and with Liz Elizabeth Warren and her policies, I don't think she's going to win the, the nomination either. Uh Joseph, uh, I think, I, I, first of all, I, not, not, now I heard Derek at the end there. Joseph, that's the real deal here. That is, how do you impact a race? You impact it with those dollars. Again, running is, is nuts. Look, the field is set, okay? And, and let's be clear. Seth Stack, a whole bunch of other people, they're going to be going out. They're not going anywhere. The key, what's going to be happening, real healers, is that, look, the top three right now, Warren, Buddha, uh, uh, Warren, Sanders, Biden. That's it. Bloomberg, you're not going to be in the top three. It's not going to no, happen. No, he won't. He won't. Well, it's not going to happen, but also I think that that point is legit, and I think it needs to be made in, in one of these two guys' ears that, listen, why not take that money and drop it on get out the vote? Why not take that money and use it to lobby for repeal of some of these uh, voter ID laws? If you really think you look in the mirror and see a president, you know, reality check is going to be hard for you. And also, not to mention the fact that a lot of this cash that they're burning, you know, yeah, they find in their sofa cushions or whatever, you know, that's, that's all well and good. But do you really want to make an impact? And do you really think that the field is so bad? I mean, keep in mind, we had a, a Republican field that was almost as big, and we ended up with Donald Trump. I mean, and there were some, some very less reactionary people who ran in that primary, and we still ended up with somebody who, who was to the far right. So if the field is there, and if the field is set, and, and also keep in mind that the, that the primary is where you test these ideas. And if they go someplace, that's fine. If they don't, that's fine too. But to, to have a set field and try to disrupt that field because of an ego trip, I don't think that's a very wise use of money, it, especially could, when we're... Could he, could he possibly be the alternative or that moderate that the Democratic Party needs right now because that's no, what Joe Biden well, Joe, <laughs> that's what Joe Biden was supposed to be if Bloomberg but he's just wanted losing, to be helpful, he's just he would losing. help to funnel some of this funding to congressional, to people who are running for Congress in some of these heated and contested seats. One of the reasons that we have Robin Kelly in my district in Illinois is because of the funding of Mike Bloomberg. We have to be certain that we are consistently fighting to protect a lot of the uh, a lot of the um, legislation that we're working towards, that Congress has worked towards, that has not been made um, that has not been made law through the Senate. And it would help to have some of these millionaires be able to fund those types of policies. Well, and Bloomberg is a moderate. Republican. I mean, he's not a moderate Democrat. Again, I heard his speech, and it was remarkable that this dude was talking at the DMC, DNC. It was very much a law and order hey guys, platform. guys, hold on one second. Remember, Mike Bloomberg's money made a huge difference in Virginia for those uh, gun control candidates. Again, that's where it makes sense. But but this whole idea is that, that you know, save a billionaire comes along. And let's also be real honest. We haven't talked about Derek. I want to go to you first. Yeah, but... One thing about Bloomberg, I just I didn't notice until earlier today, he just became a, uh, he, he was a registered Republican until last year, midterm elections, he registered as a Democrat. But I think right now, it's just as late in the game for him, but there has to be a middle ground with one of these candidates. Because right now... But you don't think Klobuchar's in the middle ground? Well, I agree ground? with you. This Klobuchar's tells, the, this yeah. tells yeah. us more yeah. about the race than it does Bloomberg jumping in. Because there are a lot of people who feel as though we don't necessarily have the moderate candidate who can win. But then we have another debatable point with we're seeing these huge fractions within the Democratic Party in and of itself, where you have these people who are left of the left, and you have these people who are trying to stay moderate. Then you have people who know that certain candidates aren't going to be able to get that diverse vote out, and they're not exciting people. So I think that that does leave room for folks who may be on the fence who have the type of money to jump in to think, hey, you know, I could jump in and disrupt this. But why do you think he's doing this? I mean, does he really look in the mirror and see a president? I think he does. But 
I'm just looking at the field of candidates right now. No, no, but are but they even, a, are they a president? But, are either one of them the president? Yeah, but even apart from that, right? Take take the field and put it aside, right? What about Mike Bloomberg makes him a president? Beto looked in the mirror and thought that he was going to be one. So I'm not going to say <laughs> that it's not something right. that, you know, people think of that probably don't have a snowball chance in hell. But this guy has been on the fence about this four different yeah. times at this point. But did Donald Trump look himself in the mirror and say, I want to be president? Absolutely, he did. Okay, so, so did Bloomberg, to this point. He looks himself in the mirror, yo, I can do this. Uh, <laughs> I mean, talk, about, talk about the soft bigotry of low expectations. <laughs> I mean... I think that goes to your point, too. If we've seen another um, millionaire, whatever, whatever his financial status is, go through this point who didn't have any ounce of the political experience or the acumen that Mayor Bloomberg does, then why not throw your hat in? Especially when you feel like the field is, in certain, to a certain extent, wide open because he's watching the it polls. Is, he's is. watching the fact that people aren't necessarily resonating 100% by any, behind any candidate right now. But I would argue the, part of that is because it's really it, early. But, but, it, but yeah, I was going to say, it's the primary. I mean, we haven't had the first vote cast yet. We haven't had the Iowa caucuses yet. I mean, yeah, if he was going to run, he could have started way back when, because we knew pretty much who was running. I think and he the, assumed that Biden would have a much sure, stronger he did, residence yeah. than he Everybody did. Yeah, he would have a much no, stronger I don't think everybody did. did. I think Biden is... He did. It was, uh, I was just reading one of the article in the Post just a few minutes ago. He felt like that Biden would have been a solid candidate, but he's been sliding. For who? But that's kind of... Ju- I mean, you know, Biden is 0 for 2, right? <laughs> yeah, Biden is 0 I, for 2. I, I'm with you. I mean, now. and he <laughs> flamed out in, in uh, uh, he flamed out after Iowa in, in 2008, and he flamed out before Iowa in, mm-hmm. two, in 2018. But we can't deny that there are people who felt like he was heir apparent, and heir apparent to that throne means that, you know, he carried the Obama legacy and he was going to have a certain amount of people in who backed him by the sheer basis of carrying the Obama legacy. And I don't think that that was a false estimation. What we're seeing is that, you know, performance-wise, your performance still matters. And I do think that, you know, we do have to say something about it being early. And after Iowa, we're going to see some things shift for people who thought that they were doing really well right. who might not be doing really well. Uh, right. A la right. Beto. Yeah. Kamala. Yeah. <laughs> Corey. But do, you, do, you, do, you, do you take anything from the fact that all the, all the candidates of color are polling in the single digits and can't get money? Is that like a thing? Absolutely. I think there's something to be said about that, and I know that we probably have a lot to say about it, but we do also have to take a break. All right, folks, back to our Roland Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. All right, folks, it's the holiday season. This is when you think about spending time with family and friends. This is also when you count your blessings and support those less fortunate. This year, be a holiday hero and change someone's life forever. Right now, hundreds of thousands of Americans are sitting in jail without being convicted of a crime. Why? Because they lack the financial resources to pay their bail. Now think about it. If you are arrested for any minor offense, you will be taken directly to jail. If you don't have bail money, you will stay there until a court date is scheduled. That could be days, weeks, or even months. Simply put, America's bail system is broken for people of color. Freedom should be free. That's why the Ebony Foundation has partnered with the Bail Project and is sponsoring the Home by the Holiday campaign. The Bail Project has helped bail out thousands of people over the years. And with your help, they plan to get a thousand people out of jail by New Year's Day. Now that, of course, would be a great holiday gift for many families. A donation from you today can change someone's life tomorrow. Now that you know the people of color represent upwards of 90% of the jail population across the country. And without bail, nearly 90% of those charged with misdemeanors pled guilty. Now, however, uh, with paid bail, less than 2% received the jail sentence. Sometimes justice needs just us. To join the fight, you can donate 25, 50 bucks or more to help the Ebony Foundation bring our brothers and sisters home by the holiday. To donate, go to homebytheholiday.com. That's homebytheholiday.com. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.